Well, next I want to turn to my conversation with the uh, with the delegate to the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Morocco. You know, Morocco is the actually the second largest investor in the African continent that's also on the continent, Phil, and they're doing some exciting work on the continent. I started by asking her uh, how the country has managed to attract its own levels of foreign direct investment from countries such as Renault, the automaker, and tech giant Dell. Become attractive because we offer first stability and security, and second, we, we, we offer a vision, a clear vision, and we offer guarantees. And I think for any investors, any foreign investors who want, who, who is looking for a country to go to, he needs this like three very important components, and that's what we do. What about this reform that you're working on, getting more into the private sector, away from the public sector? How is that going? And tell us a little bit about that effort. Well, um, Morocco has adopted an approach of private-public uh, partnership in different sectors. And uh, this approach worked very well because it is one of the best ways to attract private sector by giving them the guarantee from the public sector, but also by I involving the public sector in, in different sectors and industries. And that's what we do. We do it for um, uh, sectors like uh, uh, social housing. We do it for sectors like agriculture. We do it also for sectors sometimes. Uh, we do it also to create a small and medium enterprise to promote the creation of a uh, small and medium enterprise by uh, giving some guarantee funds, public guarantee funds, and enhancing like private banks, for example, to take the risk with the new, uh, with the new investors. You have been an entrepreneur yourself. Does that give you a certain amount of wisdom to try to solve the problems that you had as an entrepreneur uh, for the future entrepreneurs of Morocco? Of course, it's, I mean, it's, it's an experience when, uh, when you've been an entrepreneur yourself. You have the experience with the administration, mainly. Uh, you have the experience with the tax uh, management also, and uh, you try to find solutions. We always, we, I mean, of course, we keep um, uh, improving the system every year and every time we can. Uh, we have a new budget, for example, that we're working on for next year. And in this new budget, we're trying to find a solution for the very, very small enterprise or what we call self, uh, let's say, individual enterprises. Mm -hmm. We try to find solutions also for the informal economy, etc. So, of course, having an experience uh, give us the, this opportunity. But more than that, if I have to talk about my experience, I think there's something interesting to tell you is that um, uh, the reason why I, I went through the entrepreneurship in Morocco is because I saw the liberalization of the uh, communication and the media uh, in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And that was for me, that, was, that started in 2003, and that was for me a very big revolution, an opening of the country to, uh, let's say, uh, to, uh, to the freedom of, freedom of expression in general and to the youth. And I think for, at, le at least for me, that was a very, very important step forward for Morocco within, uh, into democracy, into the opening of the country. And also it's, it was giving real help to all this uh, youth mm -hmm. living in Morocco, but also living abroad to come back to Morocco and to invest in Morocco. And that's what happened. And it's continuing to happen. Yes, it continues to happen. So I, I want to bring up this other way, uh, aspect of your economic development model, which is to invest in the rest of the continent. Morocco is second only to South Africa in investing in Africa. What sectors are you most interested in, and how does it help Morocco to be so engaged in the economies of its neighbors? Well, listen, Morocco has been um, involved in Africa for years now. It's not something new, but uh, the new thing is now we're talking about what we call triangular cooperation, which means that we're trying to promote our know-how in Africa. Uh, Morocco is very interested in Africa because of many reasons. The first one is uh, the proximity, cultural proximity with Africa. And second one is, of course, uh, the need of our companies to, to go abroad sometimes. And we are uh, very uh, uh, present in uh, different sectors, especially in finance, in banking. You know that Moroccan banking and Moroccan uh, finance system is well known at the international level, level. We've been probably one of the first countries in the region that had since years, decades now, a liberal and open uh, finance banking and, and, uh, and sector, which that was in Morocco. 
Uh, we also uh, invest in uh, electrification and power mm -hmm. because we have such an experience. Uh, we've been through the, the generalization of electrification in Morocco. We've, we've been going also through uh, the generalization of access to water in Morocco. And now we're sharing such an experience with different countries in Africa because we know that the need there is there. I mean, the need is for is for electrification. The need in Africa is for uh, is to get access to to water. The need also is to build social housing to the population. And that I mean, we've been through that for years now, mm -hmm. and we found solution. And we think that our solution can be totally adapted to uh, other African countries. And that's why we go there. That's why we work together with uh, with our brothers in Africa. And that's why now we try to promote such a triangular cooperation, because we believe that we can do it with countries like USA, for example, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who is really interested to go to countries in Africa. I, I wonder, in terms of foreign direct investment, we've talked a lot about US foreign direct investment. But how much interest are you getting from Asia, specifically China? Well, China is showing a very big interest in Africa. Uh, China is becoming now, I think, they are the fourth investor in, in Africa. Uh, with the objective to be one of the to be the first or at least the second uh, main uh, investor in Africa, uh, the, probably the advantage of China is the low cost mm -hmm. of uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, the low cost of everything when they come to Africa when they invest uh, to in Africa, uh, they can do things with uh, low prices and this is this is their first advantage. Second advantage is that China. Uh, uh, is willing to take risks, mm -hmm. which is not the, 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 the case in countries maybe like US or others. Because Africa uh, p represents strong potential, but sometimes it represents also big risk, especially when we do not have maybe the same standards, international standards, than uh, what, you, what you do have here. And I think uh, that can be a barrier sometimes for uh, some investors, but it's not the case for, Afri for China, for example, or for countries that really believe, or countries who really believe in, in, in Africa.